This is BBC Radio 4. On a Christmas evening 50 years ago, a small group of people gathered together in a Middlesbrough sitting room for their weekly spiritualist circle. They'd been meeting regularly since April 1946 and had, to their own satisfaction, frequently witnessed the plainly visible forms of spirit people. They'd kept written records of who came into their midst and what they said, but that night they had something new in the room, an early tape recorder. My name's Gwen Schlegel. I was born Christmas 1924. I've lived in Middlesbrough all my life. I met Tom at work. We we worked together at the gas board and uh, we got on famously and uh, he used to talk to me a lot about spiritualism, of all the wonderful things that happened. Tom and his wife, together with a few friends, used to have a a regular circle. And um, Tom used to tell me the amazing happenings and I became very interested. But when the night came, I was absolutely terrified. My heart was thudding and I was wishing with all my heart that I hadn't got myself involved. What am I doing here? Little did I know then what impact that night was going to have on my life. This is the uh, half of the tapes that I inherited from my dad. Uh, the other half went to my sister, and unfortunately a lot of them got uh, recorded over because they didn't realise the importance of, of what was on the tapes. I'm Donald Mackenzie, and I was 19 when I actually uh, sat in that circle. I went with my father and mother, and I helped my dad set up his tape recorder, which we had to do in one corner behind a screen with just a tiny light on so that he could see to change the reels. Probably one of the very earliest domestic tape recorders that you could actually purchase. And Tommy Harrison had, uh, it was a crystal mic then, which would be maybe five or six yards away further into the room. Now then, we have now a red light. Materialisation has a red light. And he'd give the running commentary on what was happening. Our red light is hanging in the centre of the room. It consists of twin flash lamp bulbs, which give quite a bright light, but we have a rear stat attached, and we can dim or brighten this light, depending on the spirit form. My name's Tom Harrison, and I'm 85. It's me that Gwen and Don have already mentioned, and it's my voice you can hear describing the events in that small room in our Middlesbrough terraced home 50 Christmases ago. You see, the experienced spirit forms can stand a much brighter light. They're used to it. And we can see the spirit forms quite clearly from any part of the room. Usually there were just seven or eight of us in our weekly seances, but that night we'd invited a few first-time guests, and Don Mackenzie's father, Jim, recorded the sitting for the very first time. The medium, as always was my mother, Minnie Harrison. The medium sat in the corner in what we would call a cabinet. And this was just a curtain hung across the corner to blank out any light that may affect the medium. My mother was always in deep trance throughout, completely asleep. She had no idea of what was happening at all. And the rest of us would all sing together to harmonise the vibrations to provide ideal conditions for the extraordinary spiritual phenomena which usually occurred. This seance was a Christmas party for the spirit children and there was a Christmas tree in the corner and you could hear the, the spirit children playing with the toys on the Christmas tree. There it is, you can hear that bell now, quite clearly, and it's being rung by the spirit children. Yes, that bell which you were hearing then 
Uh, you can still hear it. It's ringing now. Uh, that's being rung by the spirit children. There it is. A happy song, a happy tune. I can... There's the Christmas tree rustling. Listen. You can hear the rustling. There we are. Ah, they've dropped the bell now. You heard it probably... You probably heard it drop, the, the thump on the floor. They've... Ah, this is have picked it up again. They've fooled me. <laughs> they've picked it up quickly and it's back in the center of the room now. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Then after a while, we suddenly realized that there was more than one bell. We had two sounds from different places. And later on in the night, after the light had been put on, we found out that there was an identical bell had been brought. So there was now two bells in the room, and there wasn't two bells there when we first started. Now then, we've got light. Whilst we were singing that, there was a flash, quite a bright light. There was the most fantastic coloured lights, took our breath away, just like fireworks, but without any noise. It was really something, just flashing on and off, but very vibrant colours, unbelievably beautiful, amazing. There's a low light down by the tree, uh, just down by the Christmas tree. There's another one. These are flashing on the Christmas tree. Now, this, this is the first time we've had these kind of lights. This is something new, and it takes quite a lot of power to be able to do it. There, there's, there they are again. Under these lights, we understand, are the incandescent end of an ectoplasmic rod. How it's done, of course, we don't know, and they can't tell us. But they're not material lights. They are spiritual lights, but they have a material effect. They're having quite a gale tonight. I was quite surprised at the time. But, of course, when the materialisation started, then that certainly opened my eyes. We regular sitters had already witnessed the full materialisation of spirit people. And it wasn't just a handful. It was some 1,500 manifestations over the seven years, all made visible by the use of ectoplasm. Two of the circle's founder members are Sidney Shipman, who's in his 100th year, and his wife Gladys, who is 87. Like me, both had seen ectoplasm flowing from my mother's mouth and smelt its acrid smell. Exoplasm arrived, didn't it? She produced exoplasm after that. Yes, the showed us ectoplasm yes. coming from the mouth, which comes out, out of the body like steam. Yes, it formed into spirit people, didn't it? Oh, yes. Figures. Yes. All clothed in white. But the face mm. was there. You could recognise the face. Mm. I can remember it quite well. We took photographs. You see, we're not cognizant with all the spiritual laws attached to this type of phenomena. We're very ignorant. But so far as our circle was contained, they materialised in the cabinet with the medium and walked out of the cabinet as the power grew stronger. That night, as usual, we were visited first of all by my wife's grandmother, Granny Lumsden, who had died some 20 years previously. Now that song is a song we always sing for Granny. That's her signature tune, we might say. Oh, well, here she is. She's hello, now... everybody. There we are. Hello, Granny. Hello. 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 hello, Well, you know, we look after her, don't you? No. Hello, Annie. Hello, Mother. Hello. How are we going on? Are all right? To my astonishment, into the room came this little old lady. And she was absolutely fantastic. She was jolly and friendly and full of fun. We're having everything recorded tonight. I, I know. Yes, I know. They've told us all about it. Oh, you're, you've had I your own. I want to tell me all the things, eh? Everybody here. Me? They're just there, just the same as we are. They've got hands, they've got arms, they've got a face that you can recognise and a mouth, and they talk through the mouth just the same. They are actually are a spirit body that's just been clothed in an ectoplasmic shroud so that uh, you can see them and recognise them. <laughs> and I'm very pleased to see you. Yes. I will. I'm pleased to see you. Yes. Now, I'm shaking hands with Granny here. Yes. 
I'm not yeah. here, young until I kill no. you. No. no. And she came round to each one of us in turn, shook our hands and welcomed yeah. us. Oh, well, I do always give him messages to me. The hand was very, very soft, and obviously you, you didn't grip it very hard. It it was warm. It wasn't smooth. It had a, a texture. It was warm. It was just as though I was meeting a living person. It was an old lady's hand. I just gripped it and shook hands with her, as though she were there in the flesh. It was amazing. But you know, it's nice to come, don't you? And we do like to talk to you all, don't we? But you know, I couldn't preach at you. No, no, no. no. We don't want that. No, I couldn't do that. We asked the spirits how the ectoplasmic cloak felt to them. They said it was like trying to climb out of a swimming pool whilst wearing a thick, sodden overcoat. Such was the weight around their shoulders. Well, no, I'm going because there's such a lot one to come tonight. Oh, right, so I say, cheerio, everybody. Cheerio. Ta-da, then. Ta-da. Ta-da. That's Granny Lumsden. She stands a normal height, <laughs> about five foot, I should think and is quite as normal and natural as, as we are. And she's just as real and just as live as we are. Now she's gone back behind the curtain and we're now waiting... And she was so warm and friendly and, and jolly that she just put us all at our ease. So from then on, I had no problem. The familiarity in our circle was unique. At public circles, you we're not allowed to handle spirit forms, but we were. I mean, you would kiss a relative in the normal way. It was a very advanced circle was ours. These materialisations, it's it's a very advanced state, isn't it, of spiritualism. Ooh, yes, you, it is. you can be a spiritualist without having to see all this. But uh, materialisation mediums are very, very rare. And Minnie was one of the best. I was just so flabbergasted at what I'd seen and so dumbstruck. And then in no time at all, the next one came in, you see. So here's James Andrew Fleming. Come on, Jimmy. Good evening. Good evening. Do tell me, do you get back home now? I do. You do? Yes. Good. We first heard the voice of James Andrew Fleming in 1948. He told us he'd died as a boy and was desperate to contact his parents who lived in Haverton Hill, near Middlesbrough, because they were grieving so much for him. He said he had a pet dog called Rags and gave me his address, so I agreed to visit his parents. And James must have come along too, because when I got there, Rags sat in front of me, wagging his tail. Mr Fleming was amazed because he said the dog never did that for strangers. I was able to name their son, tell them how he died on the 6th of June 1941, at 10 years old, and then to give them James's message. The most touching thing was that Mrs Fleming told me that for the first time since James had died, she had felt the urgent need to get a Christmas tree, put all the Christmas decorations up, and now she knew why. Do you think your mother and father know you at home at times? Oh, yes, yes. They do. Is your dog still there? No. Has he passed to you now? Is he with you in spirit? Yes, yes. Yes, that's good. So you've got your dog now, too? Yes, yes. That's grand. God bless you. And so every Christmas, James would come back to our circle to say thank you. And Christmas 1953 was no exception. Our most frequent spirit visitor was my mother's sister, my Aunt Agnes. She built up in beautiful detail, moved around the small room with a cheery smile and was fully aware that she was being recorded. Hello, my dear. Hello. Hello. Now, this is good, isn't it? This eh? is good, yes. It's nice to be here again with you all. Good, yes. All our love from our world yes. to all of you here. I just 
want to say that the experiments from our side have been going on whilst you have been sitting. Oh. Uh, Douglas has, as you know, got the lights out onto the tree. He did, and they were yes. very good, too. And he hopes, perhaps, later to be able to get the colored lights. He did try tonight yes. for the colored lights. Yes. But he did not succeed. No. But he does hope to be able to get them very soon now. Uh, Sidney, your mother is here, my dear. Oh, yes. And, sure of course, your that. father. Yes. And they send their love to yes. you. A new year greeting. Yes, and, of course, wishing you all, everyone, all the best. Yes. From Mr. and Mrs. Shipman. Thank you very yes. much. You have a boundless wealth of love around you. And this is a wonderful work that Mr. Mackenzie is doing. Yes. And I do hope that those who are listening in to this yes. at any time will be able to be helped and guided by their spirit friends, the same as you in this little circle, are helped and guided by yours. Go forth into the world and give your message, a message of life after death. Thank you. Good night and God bless you all. Good night, my dear. Good night. Good night, Andy, and thank you very much for that message. Mm. Aunt Agda was in the full light and she was quite clear to all concerned and was as solid as you and I are. Now then, she appears to have gone. Uh, you, you can't conceive in the mind that this is just a temporary uh, thing being materialised out of the medium's body. Uh, it seems a difficult thing to grasp, but you get so used to it that you just take it as a matter of course. When we got more advanced, we had visitors about every other week, and that's when Dr. Britton Jones came. He was interested in spiritualism, but he knew Tom's wife, because Tom's wife was the nurse at the hospital, you see. Ah, that was so it. that's how we're there. Anyway, he came, and it was him who said, could he cut a bit of exoplasm? Yes. And mm. arranged for him to do it. Now, what happened with that? I think Tom will remember more about that. Yes. Oh, yes, I remember it well. William Britton Jones was superintendent of Middlesbrough General Hospital and was a fellow of the Royal College of Surgeons and accepted as one of the most senior surgeons in the North East. The first time he met the spirit of Antag, he wanted to take her pulse. He put his fingers on her wrist. Antag stood there, smiling, all the time. And then he said, Thank you very much. You'll live. To which Aunt Ag replied, Yes, Mr. Jones, I am living. Some months later, he asked could he cut a piece of Aunt Agnes's ectoplasmic robe and have it examined. When he cut it, we could hear Aunt Ag go, Oh! And my mother, Oh! It was a reaction to the energy being damaged. And the piece he cut off was about the size of a lady's handkerchief. It was just like... A piece of garment. That's what it was. It's very fine mesh, is the, the robe. Muslim. Very the, fine muslin. Very like fine. Like a muslin. But when Mr Jones analysed it in his hospital laboratory, he found it was similar in nature to bleach. I think he was surprised and disappointed that it wasn't anything very different. But he, he became a full member of the circle. Because he was so interested. So he yes. stayed with us. Yes, he, he was he's very interested in it. Mm. Yes. He was a very nice man. Oh, yes. Very gentle. Yes. Very kind, yes. 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 Mm. William Britton Jones was the first independent expert to examine the phenomena we were getting. Now, 50 years later, my notebooks and Don's tapes are being examined all over again. I'm David Fontana. 
a professor of psychology and past president of the Society for Psychical Research, currently a vice president, and also chair of our Survival Research Committee. Could they have been making it all up? Well, of course, that's always possible. I think that it would be unlikely in this case, partly because of the integrity of Tom Harrison and the other people who were present at these sittings. There are very many uh, good home circles, and uh, unfortunately most of them are never heard about. But in the case of Tom's home circle, thankfully he kept very careful records. And um, when I first met him and talked to him about his experiences there, read the records that he'd kept, uh, listened to the voice recordings. I was very impressed indeed. This seems to me an extraordinarily good case and one that it would be very, very difficult to explain by any normal methods. For example, I think we can virtually rule out fraud. There's no question that uh, Minnie Harrison, Tom's mother, would have engaged in fraud or that the family circle who sat with her Saturday night after Saturday night in that little small room uh, would not have been aware had there been any fraud being carried on. So I think we can take it that this was a very genuine experience. We were allowed to go in the room before the seance started and, and we looked round and saw it was just an ordinary room in a domestic house. My dad had known the medium for many, many years and they'd sort of grown up together. There was no way that it could have been fake, no way at all. When you actually see the form come out and the medium was quite a large lady, tall and quite plump, and then when you see a slim spirit form come out from behind the curtain and stand there erect and shake hands with you, there can be no way that can be faked, no way at all. There would have to have been outside accomplices who were brought in to do the faking. Now, who would these have been and how could they get into a small room like that without arousing suspicion? How could they have been talked to by those present, assuming the voices or mimicking the voices of the apparent spirit who was supposed to be communicating? You know, it doesn't add up. People think it's fraudulent when they feel a human hand, they think it's the medium dressed up, but of course, in a genuine Circle, it isn't. I shook hands with my father, like you would do, you see. It's up to the public then as to how they can accept it. A lot of people won't accept it. I can fully understand people who, you know, think this is all crazy. I would have thought so myself, possibly. But I have seen it and I know otherwise. No, that Douglas is going to come, the young man who's been doing the light. There were still more surprises to come that remarkable night. The first was a Christmas message from Douglas, who had created the spectacular light display earlier that evening. Douglas had passed over 30 years previously as a baby two days old. This young man has learned to speak whilst in the spirit world, and simply by listening to us here, on this earth, he has learned to speak, so you will be very interested to listen to his voice because it has no intonation or has very little accent of any kind. I'm sitting at the side of the curtain. I can see the curtain moving to the side. Yes, here he is. Now we can just see him. Hello, Master. I am so pleased to come to be able to do the lights. It is a great privilege to me. And I hope in the future to be able to get them lot. I would like to say to the people of your world, Mother, nearly two thousand years ago, a babe was born. If the people of this earth would 
Baldo, the Christ principle, there would be much more happiness in this world. Good night. And then, quite unexpectedly, the mystery of the second bell was resolved. This is a fine old how you do, isn't it now? I, yes, yes. I did try to push my way in, you know. I got the bell for you. Oh. Cheerio, everybody. Yeah. That person who spoke then was Brownie. He's a Cockney boy who passed over in his early teens again, but he did want to come back and tell us that he had brought the bell. So now we're waiting for the medium now to come out of the trend and then we shall close our circle. You believe me, that did happen. I was there. It did happen. They spoke to us, they hooked us, they held hands. Obviously, at 19, shaking hands with a, a dead person, well, you're a little bit apprehensive, to say the least. But it's something that lived with me till I die, and I'll always be convinced that there is life after death without any shadow of doubt to me. And I know that all my loved ones that have gone before are waiting for me and that when my time comes, I'll be with them again. No doubt about it. Now, the circle has closed. The people have left the, the room. Uh, Mr Mackenzie and I are still here. And we have in front of us the articles which have been brought tonight. First of all, there's a, a terrific bunch of violets. There must be two, three, or no, three or four dozen small violets for their flowers. They've been scattered around the floor and they'll be shared amongst the sitters tonight to take with them as a memento of our Christmas party. As you heard, Brownie brought a bell. Well, that, you heard that bell. Now, this bell I'm ringing now, that is our original bell. Well, the one that Brownie has brought, there it is, you can hear the difference, that's the one that's the original one, is smaller but absolutely identical with our own original bell. Now that's the bell that Brownie has brought from the, the spirit world to the circle for the children to use. Now those appear to be the articles which have been brought tonight at this children's party. So from us here, it's good night to all of you. The voice of Tom Harrison recorded 50 years ago. Christmas Spirits was produced by Chris Alden Lee and is a Culture Wise production for BBC Radio 4.